saviors amongst us, we go through life not understanding the power that we really have. We play a significant role in other people's lives, but not understanding the power that we have. Here's a story about two individuals that found that in a very peculiar way. Savior Amongst Us is about two individuals right, who inspire others okay. yeah, to help okay. one another and move this forward. Fine in life. Gentlemen, I'm going to let him introduce himself. And why are we here today? Now I'm here with Charles Coleman, who I consider my little brother and my friend. And Velma, of course. <laughs> but I'm here for something serious. Uh, Chuck has went through a myriad of health issues. And when he passed out at the airport in New York, that hit me because of the fact that Chuck is one of the people I call saviors amongst us. Him and Velma, they can come in. They've saved women with low esteem. They've saved people at my age that uh, the whole world thought was used up and it threw out and, and we were disposable. So now we have to step up to the plate and help Chuck uh, in terms of what he's doing. Uh, anyone knows any element with your heart and treatment for that runs not only in the thousands of dollars, but hundreds of thousands of dollars. So now I'm with the public saying that you have to step up to the plate. That's all of us to assist um, our little brother in terms of getting the funding to make sure that the, he's healed and can remain uh, a savior amongst us. Because it's people like Chuck Coleman who are not, he's not, not just my friend, he's a friend to humanity. And that's the thing that we need. We need people who are friends to humanity, who are friends to all genres, who are friends to all races, all genders, in order to, to make the world, as we know it, a better place. And uh, I'm glad that I've gotten the opportunity to speak with Chuck after he literally lost consciousness at the airport on his way to Europe. So yeah, that oh in itself God, guys. Is, is, is... No, he has a defibrillator and he just passed out. Okay, we got and the defibrillators are beeping. I clicked the two response buttons and it didn't go off. I don't know if it shocked him or not, okay, but he, he passed out. Thank you so much. Medical help here. We need a medical, medical emergency. Oh my God, somebody, can you please somebody help? Oh my God. There was a there was a mutual goal between the women that I was speaking to and what I wanted. I wanted to be heard. And as I'm going around the world doing these retreats, this is what I heard from women. They just want to be heard. And I'm like, who's getting in the way of this mm -hmm. speech of mm -hmm. these women? And man has a very untold memo out there that it's his word, his ideology, his ability to dictate the narrative is what we all try to listen to. Uh, I'm a single mom with three boys who works a full-time job um, in the process of going to school to try to become a doctor and pretty much live for my children. Um, I'm a single mom of four, and I also work a full-time job to support them. Cool, and cool. they are my world as well, mm -hmm. for sure. It's made me stronger. Mm -hmm. Made me have more faith in myself mm -hmm. and to believe in myself and to believe that I am more than just a single mom who works and, and donates everything and gives everything. It's it's made me step back and look at myself and appreciate myself and appreciate all the little things that I don't see that I do, that everybody else does. It's made me open my heart to other people that I don't normally. It's made me appreciate women again. It's made me see that girls really aren't that bad mm -hmm. and that we all have issues. We do. I mean, we spend our lives chasing after our children and doing everything for them. Mm -hmm. And when, for me, coming here this weekend, um, I didn't have time to really think about them. It was hair and makeup. And I feel more confident in myself, higher self-esteem. Mm -hmm. um, it is very empowering.
just to be shot by Chuck. I operate backwards. Mm -hmm. So I'm here today to try and bring the opioids and dreams to the next level. And you had some great ideas. Can you share some of those ideas? Yes, and one of them is taking Vilma's experience and, and sculpting that clay in, into a, a vessel that will be thrown in the furnace and to be tempered so that she can be a role model. What what she endured, I saw her turn, literally turn tragedy into triumph. And once that's done, now you have a role model who says, look, I went through the tragedy, but you won't have to go through the tragedy. You can be part of the triumph. And that's the key. When people who are facilitators in humanity, when they're the ones that come along and say, you know what? I'm going to bear my soul. I'm going to let you see what I went through. Even though it might be harmful cosmetically to me, for you to see this, in the end, you're going to be better for it, and the world's going to be better for it because of me having the courage to share my story. What we're doing right now is that we want those people that do not have a voice to be able to hear us, but we need assistance. We need to put ourselves in a situation to where we have help. I can no longer go out there and charge these people that need help, money to help us finance what we're doing because these individuals, they might need it, but there's some less fortunate individuals out there that will need a lot more than these women. So the program that we're getting ready to start, that we're getting ready to air, is going to be based on probably a little bit more in the direction of we're seeking outside help. And this is what we're coming to you for, to tell that story. Now, the world, including myself, has to say, um, we have to be the saviors now. You, you and Vilma have been the saviors for the past five years. You have reclaimed souls, you reclaimed lives that most people would have done at least selfishly, and you did it without complaining. Every time I will call you, you say, I'm on the road, I'm, on, I'm in Texas. Now, where you at in the check? I'm at uh, the Bonneville Salt Flats. Where you at? I'm in L.A. Where you at? I'm in Seattle. So you, you, you stretched the acumen of your life in order to help people. And so now people have to stretch their acumen to help you and Bill. This is something that might be difficult for some to hear. And it's absolutely difficult for me to talk about, but I find it necessary for us to do so. I was walking, I was sweating, I had a life vest on. For those of you who don't know what a life vest is, it's an external defibrillator. And that was prescribed to me by the VA in Temple, uh, Texas, because I had an injection fraction rate, ejection, ejection yes. fraction rate of 15 to 20, which under 35, you get a pacemaker, and I was well below that. So they gave that to me, put me on some diuretics, got the water away from my heart, and I thought I was feeling better. Tried to go ahead and push going to Europe, and I was feeling weak, very sweaty. Going to the airport, my defibrillator went off a couple of times. When I say uh, went off, it gives you a warning. And that warning states that it's getting ready to administer uh, uh, administer a treatment, which means a high voltage shock. And in the process, the rep would explain to us what that meant. Basically, that meant that people should stand back. You should let the machine do its thing because it's reading the arrhythmias that were function not functioning in my um, heart. And if anyone is not have an arrhythmia and they get shocked, it could have adverse reactions. So in the video that you see us in, Vilma is telling people to stay away because that's what she was told to do because she was afraid that someone would get hurt. 
because that's what we were taught. Not only that, um, she filmed it because she wanted to make sure she had evidence that she did the right thing. Because this was something like in anyone who has a loved one going through something like this, this could be very traumatic. It did its thing when I was awake. It felt like something exploded in my chest. I And I was awake when it happened. It was a huge explosion. My body curled up. I seen a huge light. I seen a huge light come up and get smaller again. I seen my body curled up and it slowly went away. And basically I told Vilma and everything that we do, our whole life is an open book and we save each other's lives over and over, you know, and it's just something that we do. Not many like that or are okay with that, but here's what we received. Many people, including my family, sent me messages. Oh, did you know your aunt so-and-so had that? Did you know that's what your brother, you know, was suffering from? I didn't know any of these things because people don't speak about it. I even had people send me and Vilma private messages saying, you should not do that. My friends are calling me up, telling me not to do that. That's okay. You know, whatever you believe in, whatever, you know, um, makes you feel comfortable, that's okay. But it makes me comfortable voicing what goes on because we're all about women's empowerment and empowerment in general. We're all about communication. That's what helped Vilma by communicating what she was going through of her almost 20 years of addiction by telling people out loud that that was going on with her actually cured her because when she receives people in the background saying, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, you, I, I thought I was the only one. Thank you for doing that. You have empowered me. Now I can go and speak to my son, my brother, my grandmother, my whoever about this because now I understand more. We live in a society where we feel that being quiet is best. But in order to make good decisions, you really have to have information. So what I'm about to do today is explain to you what the doctors told me, and this is going to be very short. Chuck, your heart is failing. It's not getting any better. People with a ejection fraction rate of 15 and below, 78% of those don't last two years. And I need to get on the donor list, but I can't stop living. I love what I do. So what we're going to do, we're going to change a lot of things that we do. I can't rip and run around anymore. It's very stressful. I get a lot of questions about, hey, uh, I need my pictures. I need my pictures. This is okay. And I understand. But we're going to change some things around because I can't have people pay for something to be happy. We need to find a new way to get some assistance to help, first of all, me put me in a situation where I can continue to help and also put me in a situation where I can continue my life's work. So a heart transplant is it. And we're going to be, um, I have a bunch of friends and and family members that are putting something together for me so as of right now i'm putting this in the open um i know a lot of you are speaking in the background with one another but um what we're doing now is you know letting everyone know i need to get on the trans heart transplant plant list um feel free to reach out keep your questions you know pretty you know, straight to the point. Um, I don't mind answering questions, but I can only answer so few. And I am, you know, I'm in good spirits. I've lost a lot of weight. Um, the younger girls are starting to call me up now, you know. But um, Vilma, come on, girl. You, know, you, you have a lot of people looking up to you. Stay strong. And um, we have a lot going on. I know what saved Vilma. I know what other people are um, getting good out of the things that we do. And just remember where we stand and 
And uh, we're just going to keep on moving forward, guys. You guys take care. We love you. You want to say something? We both have seen death. And I don't believe either one of us are afraid anymore. Mm -hmm. And I really want to use this opportunity with, you know, the limited time that I have left, whether it's two years or 20 years. Mm -hmm. Even 20 years is a limited time to correct some of the wrongs that have been going on for quite some time. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and forge forward and make this happen. So tell everyone around you that surrounds you that if they don't love Chuck enough, they tell you it's going to be better on the other side. It's going to be better. There's a better place. There's no better place than me talking to you in Velma being alive on this earth mm -hmm. to function. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's it right now. And um, to be continued.